now on free speech rights and censorship with legal scholar Jonathan Turley, author of the book, The Indispensable Right, Free Speech in an Age of Rage. In addition to Mark Zuckerberg's admission about government pressure against Meta, two years ago a poll found nearly 80% of Americans believe media censorship of the Hunter Biden laptop story changed the outcome of the 2020 election. So what have you learned? Was the government involved in election interference there? Oh, I think that it was. I mean, when you suppress a story like that, uh, it is having an election effect. It was a very close election, as we all know. I wrote columns after the New York Post uh, ran that story and said, look, this is self-verifying. This appears to be true because we know the people on the other end of these emails and messages. They have confirmed that they received uh, these texts and messages. And the effort was to suppress it. And so you had Twitter, and now Facebook admits that they also suppressed the story under pressure from the government. But the problem here is that the anti-free speech movement today is being pushed in large part by the media. And they're just not reporting as much as they should on, on these stories because they were part of it. You know, years ago, I wrote a column that talked about how Houdini in New York used to make his elephant disappear every night on the stage, his elephant Jenny. People were thrilled. The interesting thing is that the, the, the key to the trick is that Houdini knew the audience wanted the elephant to disappear. It never left the stage. He made the audience part of the trick. That's what is so amazing about this Hunter Biden story and the anti-free speech movement. They made the media part of the trick. And so they're invested in it. Well, you're talking about the media. What do you think of NewsGuard? They say they have a team of trained journalists monitoring the news. Is it a reliable monitor of media disinformation or is it skewed against conservative viewpoints? Well, I had a rather sharp exchange with NewsGuard recently. I wrote a column saying that these systems of ranking sites and looking at revenue sources is threatening uh, to free speech and that NewsGuard is making a great deal of money at this. But what it does is essentially can chill advertisers from, from supporting sites and we've seen these ranking systems before. And when we write about them, they're often shut down and then another one pops up. NewsGuard's the biggest. Within a week of my writing that column, I heard from NewsGuard saying, we want to know where the money for your blog comes from. And we want to know why you don't say you're conservative and essentially tell people up front that, that, that you're giving conservative views. And I wrote a column about that too. Uh, and that led to this exchange with one of the founders of NewsGuard. Now, I'm not familiar with all of that NewsGuard does, but I oppose these ranking systems and these systems that are used by advertisers. They are dangerous for free speech. We have used, seen them weaponized. Recently, another ranking system that was supported by the United States government ranked the 10 most dangerous sites for advertisers. All 10 were conservative or libertarian. They included the New York Post. And then the sites that they said were most reliable included things like the Huffington Post. So that's the bias that you get when you allow these ranking systems to go forward. Well, what do you see happening this election year then? Do you expect more election interference, disinformation, social media censorship, or less? Well, disinformation is very much part of the effort to censor, and it's ramping up as we speak. Free speech is on the ballot. I don't think democracy is, but free speech is. And we have a choice to make here because Kamala Harris is, is in full-throated support of the censorship efforts by the Biden administration. So what must we do then to protect free speech, especially in an age of rage? Well, first of all, we have to have a type of awakening. You know, we have to remind ourselves of why this right is indispensable. But you know what? People often ask, you know, are, are you just pessimistic about the trends? And I'm not. Because there is an interesting element to believing that free speech is a natural right. Because if free speech was given to us 
by God, if it is part of being human, if it's in our DNA, then you can never really kill it without killing us. Okay, the book is The Indispensable Right, Free Speech in an Age of Rage. Professor Jonathan Turley, thank you for sharing your time and insights. We appreciate it. Thank you so much.